if you spent your childhood growing up of dreaming of becoming a Jedi one day and wielding a lightsaber across the galaxy, I know how you feel. And if you've been on the internet at all lately, I know what you're thinking. Daisy Ridley just exposed Disney, Kathleen Kennedy, and J.J. Abrams online about having Rey's heritage figured out since the very beginning. Liar! In fact, we just got proof that they had no plans at all from day one. They had no idea what Rey's backstory was. The main character of the biggest and most anticipated sequel trilogy in all of history? Yeah, this is huge for Star Wars. It just goes to show how much Disney actually cares about the fans and this franchise. And this should weigh into the future of Star Wars, but we're going to talk about what's actually going to happen in the future of Star Wars. If you're new here, welcome to the channel. I'm Michael J. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications on so you don't miss out on all the new videos I've got coming soon. The Mandalorian Season 2 drops next month and we still haven't seen a trailer for it. Crazy. And we've also got the Obi-Wan series that's going to start filming in about 6 months. And don't forget to smash that like button to help save what's left of the Star Wars franchise. But we've got a lot of exciting things to talk about so let's just jump right into the hole that Disney threw Star Wars into. So recently, Daisy Ridley was being interviewed by Josh Gad, who's been known for teasing her about giving him some Star Wars spoilers, and he asked her if she knew about Rey's parents being Palpatines from the beginning and what it was like keeping such a big secret from everyone, and she responded saying that she didn't even know about it until they were well into filming the last movie. She said they started off by playing around with her being part of the Kenobi lineage, remember the little teaser in Force Awakens? And then with episode 8, her parents were actually just nobodies, and then come around episode 9, JJ told her she might be Palpatine's granddaughter, and then a few weeks later, they were like, wait, never mind, we're not sure anymore. And they eventually ended up going back to Palpatine. They were filming The Rise of Skywalker, and she didn't know who Rey's parents were. That's crazy! This means that there was no direction at all the entire time. Them not having a plan for Rey's lineage means they didn't have a plan for their entire trilogy all along. She's the main character. How could you make two movies about her and still not know her backstory? And Kathleen Kennedy came out multiple times saying that this has been the plan all from the beginning when, in reality, there was zero plan and they just did it as they went and played everything by ear. The big shocker in this trailer, of course, the reappearance of Palpatine. Uh, what can you tell us about this? How, how long was this, was this in the cards? Was this sort of in the blueprint from episode 7? This has been in the blueprint for a long time. Yeah, we, ne we had not landed on exactly how we might do that, but yes, it's always... Always to be in episode 9. Yeah. That is one big pile of sh It shows you how much they care about their fans and everything that we love about Star Wars, but after so many mess ups, you almost come to expect it. You can also expect this friendly reminder to subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you didn't know, on average, only 8% of my viewers are subscribed, which, first off, is crazy. If you're part of the unsubscribed 90%, what are you even doing? If you're enjoying the content and want to support me and the channel for free, all you gotta do is go down and hit that red subscribe button. And second, if you're already subbed and part of the 8%, thank you so much for your support. You guys are the best. In fact, look what I just got in the mail from YouTube. Our very first play button, shiny. It's because of you guys that I'm here today and able to make these videos, so thank you for all your support and for all the times that you've gone down and punched the like button. Every single one of you has contributed and I just wanted to say thanks. We're coming up on 200k soon, as well as getting close to 2,000 members in the Discord. If you want a cool place to come talk about all your favorite movies and shows and chill with yours truly, you can go down to the pinned comment and the link will take you straight to the best Discord on the planet. All right, now back to the video. So like I was saying, that's why when the next Star Wars project comes around, I'm going to tell myself not to get my hopes too high just in case this comes out like all the last Star Wars movies Disney has done. I mean, Rogue One was great, Force Awakens was alright, but they have yet to make anything that has come remotely close to the bar that something like The Mandalorian has set. I mean, this is what we want. This feels like Star Wars, and it was made by the right people. Number one, Dave Filoni, George Lucas's prodigy. He did all the Clone Wars and Rebels. This guy's a huge Star Wars fan, and he actually knows what he's doing. And we can see that from his work. George Lucas himself, wow, they actually let him work on a project. And look how it came out. And John Favreau, just the icing on the cake. You put the right people together in a room and look what you get. Something that feels like Star Wars. It's got that charm. The fans love it. And even people who haven't seen the movies love it. In my opinion, none of the Disney movies have come anywhere close to hitting the benchmark that we know is possible because they just blew past it with The Mandalorian. 
So when these future Disney Star Wars movies start coming around soon, even though I know not to get my hopes up, I'm going to do it anyway because I'm a Star Wars fan and I can only hope they learn from their mistakes and can make something that feels somewhat like Star Wars this time. Also, during the interview, Daisy Ridley was asked, since Palpatine is her grandpa, who's her grandma? And she just shook her head and she said she didn't know. I mean, even she doesn't know that there was no grandmother. In the book, it was revealed that Palpatine had made a clone that failed and instead of killing him and trying again, they just let him go out into the world for some reason. And he was able to have a kid and was able to transfer Palpatine's powers to his kid, Rey. I mean, even though he was a failed clone because he didn't have any powers and wouldn't be able to withhold Palp's energy and powers in his body, which makes absolutely no sense. But even Daisy has no idea that she's just a daughter of a clone of Palp's. And it's not in any of the movies, so how is anyone supposed to know? Why wouldn't you at the very least try to explain this? You would watch stuff we did all the time and go, what are you trying to say? What does that mean? And I would explain it to you and you'd say, that's great. Everything you said, do it there because you're not going to be at people's home to explain it to them. <laughs> they seem very like simple, basic things, but you get so lost in the process of making these stories and you get it in your head that everybody knows what everything is and you just kind of lose your way. And when asked if she'd be down to reprise her role as Rey in 10 years if Disney ever hit her back up, she started saying, you know, never say never, a lot can happen in 10 years, and then just ended it with, you know, Rise of Skywalker kind of ended it for me. I mean, not a shocker there, Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker, as well as John Boyega, who played Finn, both just came out and said they were done with Star Wars 2. I mean, she just confirmed that Disney had no idea what they were doing with Rey from the beginning. And this is after George Lucas, the creator of the $4 billion franchise Disney just bought, reached out his hand and offered to help them continue making great movies that would go on to make them billions of more dollars. And they said, oh yeah, we'll take the help, and then turned away and went, Mwahaha, quick, let's do our own thing. We have such a great idea with such a compelling story and really strong characters. We're Disney, we know what we're doing. And then the garbage happens, the disaster of those three movies. JJ picks which fan theory he wants to use for the last movie. I mean, the most far-fetched one, just so he still catches everyone off guard. And then that flops, and Daisy comes out and admits they had no idea what they were doing all along. Knowing that they paid $4 billion for Star Wars in the first place without a solid story or direction set in place is just mind-blowing. It's the biggest insult you could ever make to the fans of the largest movie franchise in all of history. Just take their story and their worlds and their characters and everything they love about it and turn it upside down and flush it down the toilet. I think yeah. one of the most important lessons which I gave you in the beginning, which was, and Francis Coppola taught me, he says, look, if you can't write, you can't direct. Because all you're doing is telling a story on film, but the story is still the same. And if you don't know what the story is and you don't know how to write the story, you're not going to know how to direct it. These three movies were just so messy and all over the place. You don't even have to be a fan to see that they struggle to stay true to themselves over just three movies. They're constantly flipping back and forth and telling you different things about the same characters. Episode 8 looks and feels like a completely different movie than both 7 and 9 do. It feels like that movie's in the wrong trilogy or the wrong franchise. It just feels so different like it doesn't belong. They had so much time and money to do it right, I just can't believe it was done this poorly. Kathleen Kennedy in just three movies caused more destruction to the franchise than Palpatine did in all nine movies. Maybe hand Lucasfilm over to Dave Filoni. I'm not sure that Kathleen Kennedy should have ever been in charge. It's not her area of expertise. That would be George Lucas or Dave Filoni. At least listen to them because there's a good chance they know what they're talking about a lot more than you do. To just buy it and just figure it out as you go? Why? Why would you not have a set story established? Why would you just let the directors go do whatever they felt like with it? That results in the directors retconning all the stuff they didn't like from the previous movie. And that's exactly what we saw. The last movie just felt so disconnected from the other two. Having Palpatine be announced over Fortnite after no previous mention of him throughout either of the other two movies just kind of confirmed they were pulling stuff out of their butts at this point. I mentioned this in one of my previous Star Wars videos, but... I just can't believe they would do something with Star Wars, of all things, where instead of putting this simple, quick message the Emperor randomly blasted across the galaxy after being silent for 35 years, inside of Fortnite, and tease the Fortnite message in the opening crawl of the movie. That's just beyond me. What are you even doing? Just put it in the movie. I know you guys cram-packed every single second of the film and jumped forwards in time like you guys were a recap video, but still, the message was- The work of generations is complete. The great era is corrected. The day of victory is at hand. The day of revenge. The day of the Sith. Like what, 15, 20 seconds long or something? Why? Who was in this seat to make this choice? And who were all the people under them that were like, Yeah, this is a good idea. No one said anything? Really? 
They literally bought Star Wars from George Lucas and then were like, hmm, how can we make back that $4 billion as quick as possible? And then literally, from when they bought it, released the first movie less than two and a half years later. They had the release date planned for the movie before George even sold it to them. That's crazy. They rushed everything just so they could start making movies and making that money back as fast as they could. And what's even worse is that George Lucas had plans for episodes 7, 8, and 9 and was offering to help them make them and they just said nope and threw them away. Unfortunately, because of these movies, no one's looking forward to the next chapter of Star Wars now. No one really cares. We kind of want a clean slate. Just give us new stories now. No one really cares what's going to happen to Rey or Finn anymore. And even moving forward, I don't have a whole lot of faith in Disney to make great Star Wars content in the future. Ryan Johnson has his own trilogy. Like, his own trilogy. Why would any Star Wars fan look forward to that or want that? I'm open to giving him a second chance, but he's already come out and admitted that he knows nothing about Star Wars or the universe and he just wants to tell a good story. I mean, I gotta say, it would be pretty hard for him to make something worse than what he's already made. The bar is pretty low. Kathleen Kennedy just put so much effort towards making this new Star Wars politically correct that she completely lost sight of the end goal of actually making something that people liked. She thought that she could just ride off the franchise's pre-established success and fandom to push all of her ideas and politics on us, and unfortunately, I think the lack of direction is what ultimately sealed the coffin. I mean, at least we've got The Mandalorian Season 2 to look forward to next month. I'm really excited to see Ahsoka and Boba Fett and Rex, and of course Baby Yoda too. Thank you so much for watching my video today. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Make sure you've got notifications on for my videos because soon I think I'm going to start posting videos more frequently on different days, and I'll need your help watching them so they don't get dropped by the algorithm. We're going to try to hit 200k soon, but thank you for everything. I really appreciate it. And until next video, I will see you in the comments. Peace.